We are going to make a salve today. And the reason that we're making a salve is because everybody probably has really dry, chapped hands right now, because we're all washing our hands a whole bunch. So there are a couple of things that we can do to help ourselves. There are a couple plants that are out right now that are really great for this. One of them is chickweed. Um, and chickweed, I recognize chickweed because it has these opposite leaves that are right across from each other. Um, it's kind of succulent and full of water. Um, and then up top here, you'll see that the flowers look like a little star. And that's how it gets its name, Stellaria media. This is an edible uh, weed, but we're going to be using it topically today, and we're going to infuse it into oil. It's a really moistening herb that's really great and soothing for tissues, um, and so it's often thought of for helping to relieve chapped and dry skin. The other one that we're going to look at today, this is a, a really holy specimen. Uh, something has been nibbling at it, but this is a plantain. And um, these ribs on the back are one of the ways that I always identify plantain, is that all these ribs kind of run down to one, one place and they all run parallel to each other, the whole length of the, um, the leaf even down through the, the stem part. Um, and then plantain is also considered a really moistening herb. It's um, full of mucilage, um, but it's an herb that we think of as a vulnerary, so it's great for helping to heal wounds. And uh, when we've been washing our hands a lot, we can get little micro tears and abrasions um, and kind of rough spots. And so this is another herb that's going to be really great for helping us to, to heal our hands, especially overnight. So I, I wanted to ask, we have a couple different plantains in our area. Do you prefer a specific one or is there one you should avoid using? Oh, um, not necessarily. This one is the Plantago lanceolata. So this is the lance leaf plantain. There's also Plantago major, which is kind of more of a, a round shape. Um, those are the two that are most common in this area. I think there is a third, but you don't see it too often in our, in our area. Um, the two that I just mentioned, the lance leaf and the, um, the major, the round leaf, are the ones that I would recommend using. Um, the other one is a, is a native plantain um, to our area, and it's, it's more rare. We don't see it as often around here. Um, but either of these is fine. So the equipment that you're going to need to make your, your salve is you're going to need some sort of oil. Um, we're really lucky that we have um, uh, Susquehanna Mills up in Pennsylvania, and they do a um, expeller press canola, and they also do um, sunflower. We're using sunflower today. We also are going to be using some shea butter. This is a, a refined shea butter, so it's, um, you know, bright white, but you might find a shea butter that's unrefined and it'll be like a more yellowish color. Either will work just fine. We also have some beeswax here. This comes from our bees here at Foxhaven that Taylor has rendered down for us. So this is the wax from the, the bees comb. So you'll need some beeswax. And then you'll also want to have a scale. Um, you should have some sort of um, measuring cup or something to strain into. We have our strainer here. I do have some paper towels because sometimes this can get messy. Um, you'll want a spatula of some sort. Um, and then here we have a double boiler. So underneath is the water that's um, already boiling. And up top is where I'm going to put my oil, but I want to keep the oil and the water separate. If you don't have a double boiler, you can use a pot with like a, um, with a Pyrex inside of it maybe. And you can put your oil in there and, and keep them separate. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to heat the oil gently, but we don't want to put direct heat onto the oil um, because then that might scorch it. We're not trying to like fry this oil. We want, it to, we want it to be kind of gently heated so that over time it can infuse. So I already have some oil here that I made um, over the summer. This is a chamomile and calendula that I did in extra virgin olive oil. Um, so I'm going to use a little bit of this and I'm going to infuse um, some new herbs into that to kind of add some extra layers of protection and we'll probably put a little bit of um, uh, sunflower oil in there as well. One thing I want to note about oil is that regardless of which oil you use, you want to make sure that that oil is not rancid. So when you open up the oil, you want to give it a nice smell. It should smell light and fresh and clean. If it smells um, like crayons or you know smells kind of waxy or smells just off like there's a, a, a foul odor of any sort then your your oil has probably gone rancid and there's a lot of people that actually cook with rancid oils and they don't know it um, and you don't want to be ingesting that and you also don't want to put it on your skin it's just 
not, um, not the kind of oil that we want to be using. So all oils can become rancid over time, but there are some that are certainly a bit more easy to become rancid. I find that vegetable oil and canola oil can go rancid really easily. Um, you can use any oil that you feel comfortable using on your skin. This is a salve that's going to be made for protecting our skin and creating a barrier and a layer because we're constantly washing our hands right now. So I would think about oils that sit on top of the skin. Um, and that might be, for you, that might be something like coconut oil or that might be extra virgin olive oil. Um, maybe you like jojoba oil and that feels really nice on your skin. Maybe you like sesame oil. Um, you could use sweet apricot oil. Um, any oil that you cook with is also fine. Um, avocado oil, sunflower oil. So maybe do a test of different oils. If you have different oils at your house, do a test on your skin and see which one feels the most nourishing for this time. Um, and then use that and infuse into that. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure out how much, how much oil we have. to fluid ounces and put that on there and I'm going to tear it. So now it's at zero and I'm going to put my oil in there. Okay, we're at seven ounces. I'd like to do an eight ounce, an eight ounce salve. I'm going to add another ounce. Eight. All right, so now I'm going to put that oil into the double boiler. And here you can see that I've already chopped up the plantain and the chickweed. And what I've done is I've let it start to wilt. Usually you want to use dry herbs when you're making a salve because when you introduce herbs into a salve, into oil, um, the water that's already present in the um, in the plant can you know kind of interfere with the oil. You know, oil and water don't mix well, um, and so you don't want oil in your fin or you, excuse me, you don't want water in your finished product. Um, so what I've done is kind of let it let it sit out a little bit so that some of the water can start evaporating out of here, and then I'm going to stick this right into the pot. And I'll mix it up and make sure that it gets all covered in oil. All right. And again, I'm gonna let this sit now for you know, maybe half an hour to an hour at least. Um, I'm putting my finger in it just, just to test it. Um, I can hold my finger in it with no problem at all, um, and that's that's good. I want it to be, um, I want it to be warm, but I don't want it to be hot. I don't want it to be frying any of our herbs. Um, so we're really just trying to warm it up so that we can pull the active plant constituents out of this plant, so that when we strain it. We then have all those things in the oil and we can leave behind the plant matter. All right, so we're gonna let this sit for about an hour and let it continue to warm over, over heat like 